the range of Olympus Wide Aperture Pro lenses with f1.2 maximum apertures are marketed mainly for portraiture. Their technical characteristics enable the photographer to isolate the subject from a background with differential focusing, now acquiring the posh name of bouquet, meaning the quality of out-of-focus blur in an image. My interest in this range is quite different. Because of their wide aperture, they are also perfect for hand-holding in low-lit interiors such as churches and stately homes where tripods are not permitted. However, by understanding traditional photography, everything can still be rendered with biting sharpness. They are prime lenses, not zooms, and last year I used the 25mm f1.2 optic in King's College Chapel, Cambridge. My review is published on YouTube. The angle of view, equivalent to 50mm in film, was a little restrictive, but this 17mm lens changes that. Furthermore, as it is wider, the focal length is shorter, therefore depth of field increases. It might seem perverse to use a lens designed for differential focusing at full aperture to maintain overall sharpness, but this 17mm equivalent to 34mm in film does allow the photographer to include foreground interest with greater ease. I am hand-holding and trusting the excellent image stabilizer in the EM1 Mark II camera for sharp images. But unlike the 12 to 100 Pro lens, there is no additional stabilizer in the lens. Hand holding a camera in low light requires a special technique concerning posture. And whilst some photographers prefer to shoot from a tripod, they are not always allowed inside churches and stately homes. All images are saved to RAW. As I cannot use a tripod, I am not using HDR or bracketing. Neither am I using filters, as you are locked into them. But you can backtrack if post-production adjustments are made in Adobe Lightroom. Workflow is a much-used expression. Here it relates to a seamless thought process from photography through to Lightroom or Photoshop. It is important that any decisions made in camera are at the service of post-production, however executed, so it requires the crystal ball technique. There is a danger to think of these two processes, photography and post-production, separately, but they work very closely together. It was 100% cloud at St Albans, making an enormous difference to the intensity of light inside the cathedral. Contrast is reduced, and whilst drama is lacking, the evenness of light brings out detail. I underexpose by one third of a stop and spot meter near a highlight. Surprisingly, there remains a considerable dynamic range, particularly if a stained glass window is an important part of the composition. And whilst correction to highlights can be achieved in Lightroom, it is usually easier to lighten shadows. The caveat is noise, requiring a carefully calculated exposure to ensure that both highlights and shadows can be adjusted afterwards in post-production with success.
Except for depth of field, it might come as a surprise that I leave the mode dial on program and not aperture priority. This is purely for convenience because even for shutter speeds longer than 1 60th of a second at 200 ISO, the lens will default to its widest aperture. My second shoot was Lichfield Cathedral in Staffordshire. The day started cloudy, but during the afternoon it cleared, leaving a blue sky with variable cloud. With this in mind, I paid three visits to the cathedral at 12, 3 and 5 p.m., photographing similar subjects under changing light. I also took some exterior shots around the Close and Minster Pool, but composition was often affected by the curse of the wheelie bin. Although the cathedral inside is illuminated by artificial light, the subtle difference in daylight was still noticeable, particularly when the sun enhanced the interior. The contrast range immediately increases, but there was a crossover point when the sun was partially obscured by high cloud, softening its impact but still having a presence. Depth of field at f1.2, even with a modest wide-angle optic, is restrictive. Micro Four Thirds provides more depth of field than other formats, reputedly two stops over full frame. For some shots, I selected f4 on aperture priority and focused about one-third into the view to increase depth of field further. This resulted in a shutter speed of 0.8 of a second, with the ISO still at 200. Yet, the EM1 image stabilizer passed the challenge with flying colors. I also held my breath. At the best of times, calculating the exposure differences between highlights and shadows inside a church is challenging. I prefer underexposure, but judging the precise amount requires experience. Here is a classic example, a bright stained glass window surrounded by a dark border. Left to auto, the window will be overexposed. Spot meter off the window and when corrected in Lightroom noise could be increased. I go for compromise requiring careful judgment by underexposing yet allowing the window to become slightly overexposed. This can also be done with exposure bias to a minus quantity as well as spot metering. Modern sensors in conjunction with a latest version of Adobe Lightroom can correct both extremes. Here is the Lightroom panel with the settings. The Lady Chapel has magnificent 16th century glass, having a high colour dynamic range. The technique just described was implemented, the highlights and shadows adjusted in Lightroom, adding that creative personal touch. A prime lens can be restrictive and there are times when I longed for a zoom. The extra wide aperture did make life easier. A plus when a tripod or monopod cannot be used or there is nothing to lean on. In today's high-tech camera world, we perhaps overlook traditional techniques that can often solve a technical problem when the answer is not technical. In other words, correct posture, hold your breath and don't dither. With the help of an image stabilizer, 
It is amazing what is possible when others say that it is impossible.